basement? What an insult. That's what you're thinking, Lulu. We got a good group here. That's Norma and Alan McWhorter. They head up forensic sciences. They're screaming at Jimmy Bellow because everybody screams at Jimmy. He's got the short stick. Real cadote, but a good heart. Ned, do me a favor. Don't call you Lulu? This really is the pinnacle, isn't it? The criminal profiling unit is a cutting edge. With one hiccup in an electric company, and what do you got? A couple million bucks worth of squat. I feel like I've arrived. You got the fare, you can ride the bus. You still shooting? Oh, just to keep up my certification, I'll clear my head. Don't make a thing out of it. The last refuge down here of sexism is on the shooting range. My ego remains holstered. Westy, this is Lulu Benoit. Hi, John Grayson. Hello. I gotta go take my bladder pill. <laughs> Please, sit down. Thank you. So, uh, how are things with the DCPD? Well, we miss Ned. Well, you can't have him back. He's priceless. So are you, from what I read from your record. In fact, you might find that a part of our training program may be too elementary for you. You don't have to be charming on my account, Mr. Grayson. Excuse me. Grayson. Oh, yes, Sheriff. We, uh, we received your evidence by mail yesterday. How long is it going to take? <clears throat> we'll be scraping down the clothing today. I'm not going to make any promises because a full analysis takes time, particularly considering the condition of your um, evidence. This is a capital case, Agent Grayson. I realize that, Sheriff. That you we get a customer? We get three capital cases in this office every day of the year. They're more important than mine. No, I'm not judging yours less important. Looks that way to me. Sheriff, you've processed my priority. Now, I don't know anything more alarming than a prioritizing bureaucrat. You sit up there in your think tank. Meantime, I got a county up in arms. Yeah, Sheriff, uh, you sent us your evidence in a brown paper bag. It had been handled by your entire department. Now, I would recommend that your deputies train in the proper procedure for collecting and handling evidence to avoid tainting it. Now, we've got a program down here, a six-month program. I'd be more than happy to run one of your men through it. What's the cost? No charge. We'll talk to you later. We are the nation's best excuse for inept police work. They can't solve it? They send it to us. Then they hold a press conference. They say, hey, we send it to the feds. They can't figure it out. Who can? Come on, I'll take you to the training office. Yeah, we'll get you cracking on something this afternoon. Well, what about this? Trainees work closed cases. We'll get into what you'll be working on this afternoon at the staff meeting. Uh, Mr. Grayson. Call me West, please. I've read and utilized your deviance pattern consistency in sexual homicides. My postgrad thesis was a critical analysis of your victimology model. I read it. My close case and conviction ratio is the highest of any homicide detective in this country. And I was trained in the fundamentals by the last of the old wizards. That's my girl. I have a lot to learn, but I come to the table with a full plate. Don't relegate me to dry runs with old cases. I'm not operating on a learner's permit. I want an active case. This afternoon, staff meeting. Come on. Thanks, Jimmy. Lulu asked for the Sun case. Anne, would you guide us through it? This is active. I want to be productive while I'm learning. And if you guys don't mind, uh, I prefer Lucille. Let's take Lucille through it and see what she's got, Anne. OK, Lucille. Vancouver, British Columbia. Case RH-289975, J. Victim, Thomas Sung, age 12. 
rape, murder. Saturday, October 7, left home 11.30 a.m. to travel eight blocks to a weekly music lesson. Body was discovered two weeks later in an unincorporated wooded area 20 miles from the victim's home. Cause of death? Asphyxiation. White cotton fiber found between front upper incisors and throat and lungs. Smothered by a bed pillow. Probably manufacture yet to be determined. Material usage too broad for trial admission. Trauma or semen evidence? Yes. Interior and exterior anal region. Cavity ruptured to the sigmoid flexor. DNA prints available for matching in blood type. Evidence at scene? We follow the victim first. Parents, university educated, Nico and Jamie Sung. Housewife and MD, internist. He's 34, she's 31. Solid members of the community, good parents. Residents? Four-story pre-war luxury co-op. Neighborhood? Residential retail to a restored Victorian sector called Gastown. Caters to tourists. Middle upper middle class mix, low crime rate. And the music teacher? Ruzala Karchakov, 60-year-old female Russian immigrant. Studio is second story walk-up in Gastown. Victim's clothing? Jeans, running shoes, blue turtleneck sweater, red nylon, goose down hooded parka found nude, except for a cheap cloth braided bracelet popular with children. No clothing recovered. In the crime scene? Discovered by hunters under a thin layer of dead leaves. They altered the scene enough to confirm death. Coarse red nylon polymer fiber was found on the body. Low cross-sectional shape matches carpeting installed in Volkswagen and Audi cars built in Germany between 1975 and 1980. 400,000 vehicles. Tan acetate fibers consistent with carpet manufacturing. Manufacturer and or use not yet determined. Rabbit fur on victim's hands, probably from gloves. And, and that's it. Any similar cases in the region? No. You tell us something. Well, the case is two months old. The little boy is a low risk victim who became a victim of opportunity. The child played no part in the instigation of the crime other than gender age with a small probability of dress and race being a factor. And? I'm not sure what you're asking. A disorganized crime scene indicated by the incomplete covering of the body. The red fiber indicates automotive type. Tan fiber may be from carpeting an unsub's home. Unknown subject is male, white. I assume DNA print confirms? Pedophile, possibly attracted to flashy things. Red floorboard carpet, red parka, under the age of 30, probably under 25. Disorganized crime scene suggests haste in retreat, possible inexperience with the commission of the crime. Probably not the first time he's molested a child, but with no previous similar acts in the region, it may be the first time he's killed, or he may have moved here from another jurisdiction. All right. Lucille. You guys are good. Anything you want to add? You'll kill again. Pedophiles tend to suffer enormous guilt. Perhaps this was a single aberrant act that he won't do again. If he were truly guilty, he would have gone back and buried the body in whatever his perception of a proper grave would be. It's an interesting theory. The letter, Westy? There's a letter. Hand printed. Traces of rabbit fur found in envelope match the uh, fur found on the victim's body. The unsub may be into some kind of dressing ritual. No prints other than the family's, no postmark. The letter was slipped into their mailbox five days ago. Jimmy, you read it. I know you think a lot about your little boy, because I do. He was a sweet child. And I want you to know he did not suffer. After all the acceleration, we think he means acceleration. A subconscious reference to sexual climax. After all the acceleration, guilt came over me. You should feel guilty too. Smart people like you should know the streets are not safe. They are never safe. Believe me. 
Excuse me, I need to use the ladies' room. Think Tony, me, and Lulu should go up to Vancouver. She's a trainee, Ned. Well, she's the brightest person to step into this unit since I got here. <laughs> <laughs> Trainees are restricted to closed cases. Well, she's past training. She could be a candidate for a permanent position. Look, a significant aspect of our work is to teach these police departments to deal with these monsters. Now, her job is simply to take what we teach her back to her department. See how she reacted to the photograph? That was an emotional choke. It was a scent of the hunt. Can we give it a day before we start shouting hosannas? They're pressing me to cut the budget, not add to it. Look, the case is active, but the crime is old. Ned and Tony could walk her through it, trace the victim's path. Now, that's something she would learn from. I'm out gunned here. Jimmy? Uh, no, I'm, I'm sidestepping this one, Skipper. All right. You get a hold of Tony, and you walk her through it. British Columbia Police Department will benefit from the two of you anyway for a few days. They're at a dead end. What could go wrong, right? <laughs> Sweetie, your tongue is hanging out of your mouth. Uh-huh. It isn't very attractive. Uh-uh. Why do you suppose your tongue is such an integral part of your deductive reasoning? The permutation of a species, subspecies to quantify animal hair, comes with an area code. Don't be overwhelmed. Yeah. Jacket. You think I have ice water running in my veins? I can't get my kids out of my mind. I called their school an hour ago just to make sure they were there. I hate working with newlyweds. And he's going to kill another child. And he's going to get away with it. And then he's going to realize that we're impotent to deal with him. And he's going to go on a kid-killing frenzy. And 15 or 20 children later, we're going to catch him because he's parked at some fire zone. Cleanest, safest cultural center on the Pacific Rim. A place for raising families. We're very upset. This is it. The Sung family is fourth floor center. I haven't arranged for you to talk to them. I'd prefer you didn't. No need to. God, they've been through it. 11.30. What's his path to the music teacher? Music teacher's five blocks straight ahead. way.
you just kept going this way. I'm sorry about this. Forget it. I hope you're right. recognize this child? Oh, that's that poor boy that was murdered. Was he ever in here? We don't allow children in here. How's that work? Mm, very well, I hope. Bloody thing cost a fortune. We have a contract with Betrotech Security. I'd like to see the tapes for October 7th. This is the tape Tony satellited to us. And we're looking for? I don't know, but he thinks this is the path the sun boy took to the music teacher. October 7th. 11.40 a.m. Stop. Could that be Thomas Sun? I love your eyes. He's gone. frame in that car that car is moving at the same pace as that little boy no, i don't know maybe, maybe it's just somebody looking for a parking place or a killer stalking his victim it's ann's profile first time compulsives don't creep through unfamiliar territory where they'll draw attention to themselves he probably lives in the neighborhood we need to isolate the image I have a dead body in the car. I've been driving for half an hour, 30 miles an hour. I've been doing the speed limit. Less. Don't want to risk it. Nobody around. I pull over. Couldn't find my way back there at night, so it's day. I could see road a couple of miles in either direction. I stop here because if anybody sees me, I can see them first. I pick up the body, 90 pounds. Heavy, but I gotta go deeper where nobody's gonna find it. For... I stop here. Why? I should keep going. Why stop? The car's coming to cover. Until it's clear. Kick leaves over body. Oh, stop it! Oh, stop it! Stop. I'm freaked. What if other cars go by? I can't be seen here. The body's buried enough. Fear. Adrenaline. I gotta get out of here. Somebody drove by here while he was carrying the body. Somewhere there's a witness. Or at least saw the car. Probably harder to find the witness than the unsub. The guy knows there's a witness, at least to his car being parked out in the sticks. Now, we should play that card. Tony, you don't have to shout. I'm sorry. I'm worked up. Ned, what do you think? I think Tony's not married because of the way he dresses for bed. Come on, Ned. I don't know. We plan a story in the local papers that there's a witness. 
Might drive the unsub deeper into hiding with no guarantee of turning up the witness. We've done it before, and it's worked. Only when we've had the evidence to back us up, or we've got no place else to take the case. What's more evidence? We've got fibers to the make of the car. We've got video identifying it as a two-door. We don't know that that's the unsub's vehicle, do we? Westy, please, buy into this for a minute. I know this guy. OK, give it to me. He's white, 20 to 25, because that's the pattern with these guys. Correct. He likes things flashy because he isn't a... That's a guest, Tony. Correct. He drives a two-door Audi of some medium or pastel color. He lives in the Gastown area because he's too new to this to be stalking foreign territory. That's two guesses in a row. I'm certain of both. Try thinking admissible, Tony. He was scared when he disposed of the body, so he's not certain he didn't make other mistakes. You plan a story about a witness, and within 24 hours, you'll find a two-door Audi with red carpeting of some medium hue being driven out of town by a dull guy in his early 20s wearing rabid fur-lined gloves who lives in or around Gastown. Or he slips out of town, and who knows where he's going to start preying on children next, right? Now, let's see what the computer digs up. Is Lucille there? She's in her room. How's she doing? Hi. Tony? It's a little intense for her, but she's doing okay. I'm the one developing an edge. <laughs> so what else is new? Alma and Norma are working the tape. Let's see what we get. And Ned, I want you to keep an impartial eye on Lulu. What is it you smell, Westy? Anger. I don't know, maybe it's me. Good night. Night, Tony. See you in the morning, Ned. Problem that? Nah, she's out snooping. Bad habit I can never break her of. Night. Night, Tony. in there. Yep. And I'm going to pull him out. You guys are in early? Never left. We might have some. We know the dimensions of the window, the distance from it to his head. So from that, we can estimate very loosely his height. I think I can give you a picture. Assuming this is the unsub. Yeah, we went up there expecting nothing. And this is what we got.
Yeah, right. This will be a lot of help. Mr. Piper? It's time to play. Let me tell you what the criminal profiling unit means to me. I was born and raised in Largo, Florida. It's a small place, about 6,000 people. Last year, serial killers took out a small town. Budget cuts are inevitable. What we expect is cooperation in obtaining them. I have no fat down here, Senator. Mm -hmm. Some people think your criminal profiling unit is a high-tech snake oil scam. Your cost per conviction ratio doesn't mitigate the allegation. Cost per conviction is an unfair measurement. Over the past seven years, $25 million has gone into CPU, and that result has been 18 convictions. How much? 1.4. $1.4 million per conviction. That doesn't include court costs. Those 18 convictions came over the past two years at a cost of 44000 And? The 18 men convicted confessed to 558 murders. 461 of those were women. It's a sexual thing. The mean age was 25. Not unlike your age. Most are kept alive for days, brutalized, dismembered, and then discarded like rancid meat. We can do without the dramatics. Senator, we know next to nothing about the serial criminal. But what we do know today is light years ahead of what we knew seven years ago. And we know it because of the people in there, 25 million to convict the murderers of 558 innocent citizens. That's $44,000 per victim. I don't envy you, Senator. Mm. I certainly wouldn't want the responsibility of putting a price tag on the lives of future victims. Excuse me. Buzzy, man. Sun case. The rabbit fur isn't glove lining. I isolated the subspecies. Terrific. Excuse me, Senator. I may be on the verge of reducing my cost conviction ratio. Yes? Hello, 
Come on. What are you looking at? Just waiting for the clock to whistle. Clock to whistle? He never showed up. I called his mother. He was such a delicate, sensitive child. There was so much love in him. But it was in his playing. Sweetness touched the keys. Linton. This for you? Yeah. Tony, forget the gloves. The fur comes from a standard French lop. A what? That's a brown, long-haired, floppy-eared rabbit weighing about 30 pounds. They go for 50 to 100 bucks. They are pets or for show. Anything else? Yeah, I'm working on an address. Boy. I always loved that sound, until Tommy. What does Tommy have to do with that sound? Every Saturday, the clock sings the hour. And when it's finished, 12 o'clock, I knew Tommy would be running up the stairs. Well, it was always just a little late. Children love to watch the clock of steam. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need some air. Did you ever see him talking to any older males, say, 20? Suspect. Unknown. The make, model, and color are what we're looking for. There are children watching the clock whistle. When the clock stops, the children look for the next entertainment. And this hand comes out of a car window holding a big bunny rabbit. It's alive, Ned. Its nose twitches. The bastard's trolling for children. What bunny rabbit? Standard French lop. We're looking for a guy with a show rabbit, not rabbit fur lined gloves. That's why Westy called. You, you saw this guy? Yes. Well, describe him. I can't. He was wearing kabuki makeup. But you saw him? Yes. Oh, you forget. There he is, guys. You walked out of that building intent on killing him. Why is that an inappropriate response? You're supposed to be a detective. I am a detective. We're guests here, consultants. This isn't even our country, and you sneak a weapon into it. You're here to learn. I'm here to find the monster who murders children. She made the guy. these things you were the best I worked with you're out there stalking this guy on your own like some lone justice you have any good reason why because he's out there you're as crazy as he is give him the license please. Give it to him. XQR, 18SB. I want you to go back to Washington immediately. I want you to spend some time with Anne. For psychological evaluation? You need it, Lulu. I'm sorry to see what's happened to you. What about the killer? 
Well, I don't know, Lucille. Maybe you scared him enough so he's on the run, hiding. Maybe in another city. Maybe we can't find him because you played Mighty Mouse. He ran because I screamed, not because I'm a cop. You're sure? Yes. That doesn't excuse your behavior. Go back to Washington, Lucille. What are you doing here? Well, you're done for the day, Mr. Piper. We'll play again tomorrow. We made the unsub off the license plate Lulu gave us. We're staked out at the address. Alan was right. He lives in Gastown, and Lulu, well... Ned, I've been through her file. It's exemplary. Yeah, you sense it, Wessie. Sorry I didn't pick up the slack. Well, these are the toughest situations to face. You know that. Believe me, I'm sympathetic with anybody's desire to ignore procedure when it comes to child killers. Ned, you know this is the first homicide case she's been involved with where a child was the victim? Well, I didn't know that. Well, maybe there's something here for her to learn. I hope so. Is she on her way back? Yeah. Should be getting on the plane about now. When are you moving on the suspect? She's waiting for the Crown to issue the warrant. Well, you let us know how it goes. Yeah. She's good, Ned. She's real good. I know. She knows it, too. Problem is control. You have to have discipline, Tony. You put a lot of people at risk today. Nobody actually looks like this. It's not a perfect world. The car registered to Henry Faust off that Canadian plate you gave me. The phone number is 604-555-2298. <laughs> Your kids are mine. Birthdays are our specialty. The police are coming. What? What? This isn't the right man. This isn't the right man. God in heaven, I've shot somebody. You killed somebody. Tony, fuck up there. He ran for a reason. But he's not the man in the picture. Check the rest of the building. Poor thing. I don't know where to pet it or book it. Here's a souvenir. He sees it. He relives it. You know, this, uh, this person was a university graduate. They're always smart. We want to believe they're simple-minded so we can find an excuse in their brutality. They're not. 
These guys invariably test above average. The time allotted for you to dial has expired. Please hang up and Give me a list again. of the phone calls you made or received today. No problem. The hardest thing to admit is that I should stay away from the case. Every one of us, at one time or another, have pulled ourselves out of the investigation. You're stressed out, you recognize it, and you turn it over to someone else. And it's not a sign of weakness. Listen, that's the only thing you learn here. It's enough. I appreciate your patience. I need to monitor my behavior. I know I can do it. We know about the phone call. Am I being charged? No. We're going to clear your things out. You'll have to find another line of work. Why, Lucille? Can you answer that? What answer do you want, Ned? That I'm barren? That I have a missing child? That my stepfather raped me? What answer do you want? I just want the truth. <laughs> I hate them. I just hate them. After 10 years of this, I woke up hating them. I hate them, too. But I leave it at home. Everyone here does. You know, I slapped her. Gave her a real shot. I, I have done that a few times in my life when I had guys obsessed to the degree that they were putting other cops at risk. You know, I, I do it to, to rattle their brains, to get them to stand up straight and see things with clear eyes. So much at stake when the trail's hot. Uh, you get a guy who's got his nose on and can't see the turns up ahead, you're, you're doing him a favor, drawing his attention to it. They, you know, shake it off and say, you know, thanks, I needed that, and then we'd move on. But she glared at me. She, she disdained me for it. I felt then like a, I wasn't giving the fellow cop a wake up and smell the coffee cup. I felt like I was hitting a woman. I felt ashamed. Let it go, old friend. You were right on all counts. I shouldn't have hit her. We keep you around to remind us of how things used to be. You're the only guy here who still keeps a rubber hose in his desk. <laughs> Come on. Let's get some coffee. I'm the only cop I know that hates coffee. <laughs> the day she walked in my office 10 years ago, she wasn't there five minutes, and I knew I was dealing with somebody that had it. You know how rare that is? I was elated. I didn't stop to look for Foz. Well, maybe you uh, slapped her because... I slapped her because I didn't see her weakness. I blame myself for it. You know, you got to let go sometime. Accept what is. Like the rotation of the sun, the change of the seasons, the fundamental makeup of, of character. Certain things we have to accept because we cannot alter them. Like age. Make a wish and blow out the candles. <laughs> not my birthday. It's not even close. We know. <laughs> blow out the candles. Yeah. Yeah. Where are my presents?